Hi guys, welcome back to Fertility Friday. Thanks for joining us. Um, so today we'll be talking about causes of infertility. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to take a look at my previous video on how pregnancy happens. Um, understanding the mechanism behind um, how pregnancy occurs will make this topic a little easier to understand. Um, so infertility affects one in eight couples, so it's a fairly common condition. And before we think about ways to treat infertility, we typically start with um, trying to identify a specific cause for that infertility. And so um, we start at your initial visit with taking a thorough history, doing a physical exam, doing an ultrasound, and um, essentially looking for any risk factors that may be clues as to why it's been challenging to conceive. Um, and when we think about causes of infertility, we typically think of them in certain categories. So the first category would be causes related to the ovary, um, and that happens about 20 to 40% of the time. Um, causes then next related to the fallopian tubes or to the pelvic anatomy, which happens about 30 to 40 percent of the time. Um, causes related to male factor, which is also about 30 to 40 percent of the time. Um, causes related to the uterus. And then lastly, unexplained infertility, which is when the workup comes back completely normal, and that happens about 10 percent of the time. Um, so now we'll take a look at each of these categories a little bit more specifically. There are two main causes of ovarian dysfunction, low ovarian reserve and ovulation dysfunction. Let's look at low ovarian reserve first. Pregnancy rates start to gradually decline at age 32 and more significantly at age 35. This decline in pregnancy rates is associated with an increase in miscarriage rates. Why does this happen? Well, when an egg is made, it goes through two division processes and you end up with a normal number of chromosomes in the egg. As we get older, these chromosomes become sticky and don't divide properly, and you end up with an abnormal number of chromosomes in the egg. If this type of egg were to fertilize, you end up not conceiving, miscarrying, or carrying a genetically abnormal pregnancy. So it's important to seek help sooner rather than later because it can become more challenging to conceive as we get older. There are a few causes for ovulation dysfunction and they generally fall into four different categories. The first category are patients with low FSH and estrogen levels. The body essentially stays in a quiet state. There are many different reasons for this, but some examples include patients experiencing extreme physical, nutritional, or emotional stress, extreme weight loss, or extreme exercise, such as marathon runners. The next group have normal FSH and estrogen levels, and the patient still doesn't have normal cycles. An example of this are PCOS patients. The next group have high FSH levels. An example of this are patients with premature ovarian failure. And the last group have high prolactin levels that prevent them from ovulating. Next, we'll look at causes of infertility related to the fallopian tubes or to the pelvic anatomy. Prior pelvic infection, endometriosis, or prior surgeries are the main causes for distorting the pelvic anatomy. These conditions can result in the tubes being blocked, either at the beginning part of the tube, called the proximal tube, or at the end of the tube, called the distal part of the tube. The tubes can also be blocked if the patient has a history of prior tubal ligation, where the tubes will be occluded in the mid portion of the tube. Next, we'll look at causes of infertility related to the uterus. There are structural problems that can occur within the uterus that can make it difficult to conceive. Some examples include polyps, fibroids, or adhesions, which is scar tissue, that can occur within the uterus. These structural problems can often be treated with surgery. Next, we'll look at causes of infertility related to the male. These also fall into similar categories as the woman. The first category is when the FSH is low and the body remains in a quiet state. The next category is when the FSH is high or primary testicular failure. Examples of this are patients with genetic disorders, undescended testicles, varicoceles, infections, environmental toxins, or chronic illness. The next category are disorders of sperm transport. An example of this would be a patient with cystic fibrosis where they have a congenital absence of the vas deferens. The last category of infertility related to the man is essentially due to unknown causes. When the workup comes back normal, we are left with a diagnosis of unexplained infertility. 
Unexplained infertility can be due to couples just falling on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of conceiving, or it can be due to causes that we cannot identify with our current testing methods. Sometimes this can be due to issues related to the egg or sperm or implantation. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, feel free to comment below, give me a like, share with your friends. Um, and you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube under the handle Anu Ketheracin MD. See you next time.